Well, hello, everyone. I want to welcome you back to uh, another episode of this fascinating series concerning the historical criticism of Islam. And I hope everyone has been enjoying it. And we want to thank you, of course, for uh, many of your comments and interactions with us. Keep them coming. And we enjoy, of course, reading them and responding to them. And I know uh, Dr. J pays attention to all of the comments, literally, and he goes through them. And uh, sometimes, really, the shows that we end up doing or he end up doing uh, are based on some of the interactions that he's receiving from people, uh, recommendations, clarifications, uh, which is, you know, the, the, the way it should be, really. We want to make sure that it is utilized, meaning these videos, in a way uh, that is helpful to you and your ministries. At the end of the day, it doesn't do us any good to keep it just on our channels. We want you to be the expansion of these platforms. So we thank you, of course, in advance for doing all of that. Last time, we talked about the problem of sources when it comes to the Islamic sources, and specifically, specifically, at least the first 200 years of Islam, and maybe even, let's take it a little bit closer, the first 100 years of Islam. Today, we're going to continue with that, and we are going to pick it up from a slide that we finish with, which is a timeline slide. And with me here, of course, to unpack all of this is Dr. J. Smith. Dr. J., Welcome back. Thank Last you. time you showed uh, uh, some, uh, you know, a, a timeline slide related to the sources of the Islamic tradition. Yeah, let's look at that slide again. Let's right. go back to it. There you can see it here. This is the slide we're talking about. And we talked about the green, that's the, the, the uh, Sira, which is the biography of Muhammad. We noticed that Ibn Hisham and Mawl are the ones that write. They're the first to write anything down, and they mm -hmm. write his biography, what he did. But the most important genre are the blue. The blue would be the hadith. hadith. Yeah. And these are the ones who who tell you how to walk, talk, eat, drink, sleep. How every Muslim is to live is to follow these guys yeah. right here. And they are started with al-Buhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Majah, Daud, and An-Nasai. And the first two are a big deal because we call them Sahih, meaning the authentic. It's almost as good as the Quran, technically speaking. Without error. Exactly. Without error. That's what I've always been told. That's what you've always been told. And we assume, okay, if they're without error, that means they were there. They heard this. They were eyewitnesses to this. But look when they died. 870, 875, 884, 887, 899, 950. That's the ninth and 10th century. The same with Ibn Hisham al wikidi That's the ninth century. Muhammad yet was born, uh, died in 632, that's his death date. And we then ended with the Tafsir al-Natari, which is al-Tabri, and 923, 10th century. So let's just look up there uh, and notice how many years. Well, right here we have 200 years span between the death of Muhammad, notice the death of Muhammad and the death of Ibn Hisham. Why is that a problem? Well, it, it is a problem. Let's assume, let's assume for the sake of argument, Ibn Hisham lived to be 100 years old. He still started it, at least was born 100 years after the death of Muhammad. So he's not an eyewitness. That's a problem. Okay, that's a problem. And why, is it, why, why do you want an eyewitness? Well, you want an eyewitness because at least an eyewitness can collaborate what is written to support the events, to support the saying, to support many of the social and uh, uh, religious and other aspects of the life of Muhammad because he's the model, right? I okay. mean. So if there's an accident on the streets outside, what do the police do? They put up a sign there and they put the day, they put the time, and then they say there's a phone number. They said, if any of you saw this accident, please call this number. Why? Because they've heard already the testimony of the, both the individuals who are in the accident. They want to see some outside eyewitness. They want to see corroborative evidence. They don't want you or me to come up and say, well, I heard from so-and-so, from so-and-so, from so that this is what happened. No, they want to actually see people who were actually there. And that's all we're asking, are we not? Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. none of these are eyewitnesses. No. 200 years? I mean, it's about, it's a miracle if Ibn Hisham lived for 200 years. And even if he lived for 200 years, that's after the death of Muhammad. So until you saw these dates before, did you know that Ibn Hisham or al-Buhari were not eyewitnesses? You know, here's the thing about Islam, by the way, Jay. I mean, as a Muslim, first you don't look at these dates, and even if you see them, somehow you're blinded to even question them. And then you get into what we call the chain of narration, and you start believing in the fact that, oh, these are trustworthy men who reported all of these events. Explain that right there, the chain of narration. What are you talking about? Well, we're talking about somebody who heard from the prophet, right? And he reported it to someone else, and that someone else reported to someone else. It's almost like a couple of generations going through all the way until you get to the time of Bukhari, and he started to collect those. So this is called Isnad. That's right. And yeah. Isnad means 
oral tradition. Yes. So so and so who got it from 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 the prophet. Two hundred years of these names of narration. And yes, and the isnad gives you the matn, which is the content of the hadith. That's why we see sometimes Bukhari will report the same thing three or four different ways. Contradict, especially Al Tabari. He is yeah. well known for this. In yeah. fact, he takes all kinds of contradictory material, just slaps it up there, puts it out there, and lets you, the reader, decide which one is authentic. That's right, that's right. So the isnat are chain of oral tradition. This is called oral tradition. Did any of those the names within the isnat, did they write anything down? Well, it's oral. So they didn't write anything Everything down. Everything oral. And this is what happened uh, when, when people began to point this, you know, basically at least the first 400 years of Islam, they came up with a science called the science of men, ilm rijal meaning now you have to analyze the characters of these people. And if one of them is a liar, you know, you kind of like feel like the chain is broken now. You have a problem. You and I know what, what that means when it comes to Hafs, of course. So when, when it says one is lying, why is, and why is it people are attributed with lying? Because that doesn't fit the narrative that as we're going to see, the Abbasid narrative. Mm -hmm. But um, be, listen, before we finish with this timeline, I want to put up this character here, because this guy is pretty important, Abdul Malik. As we're going to find out as we're going to go through the series, Abdul Malik is really imp influential. Now, I'm not going to tell you why. I want you to tell me why is he influential. Well, Abdul Malik is influential for a number of reasons. I mean, already, I mean, he's the guy, for instance, who built the Dome of the Rock. Okay. I mean, He's the guy that has a lot of Islamic coins uh, okay. that were uh, basically implemented. Uh, he is the guy, in my view, uh, based on the data that we know today, that have really uh, collected a whole lot of things related to uh, the book, the man, and the place, technically speaking, or at least uh, spearheaded all of that. Not the in place. A, in a formal, uh, I mean, at least the man. Not the place. Yeah. And I'm also going to dispute that he was the one that had anything that had coins that have to do with Islam. I'm going to dispute that even, but that's coming later. Because that has but nothing the shahada, to do with Islam. But the Shahada, of course, began to emerge at that time also. Okay, but the name Muhammad was introduced by him on the coins and yeah. on the Dome of the Rock yeah. and on the protocols. The word or the title Muhammad was introduced by him. Mm -hmm. And we do know that the reference to people called Muslims or Islam, some have attributed that to him. So he's pretty important. But look at look at how much timeline it is, uh, how many years between him and Im, uh, Ibn Hisham. We have 141 years. <laughs> so even that is huge, right? Of course. Uh, but he is not that important to me. It's these people that are important to me. Why are these people? Why do you think? Now, you don't know what I'm going to say, but I'd like to think what, see what yeah, you're going to say. Certainly. I mean, really, if, if for, for any person who studied the history of these caliphate, you'll notice that the Abbasides were a big deal when it came to formally, basically, developing collections, like Hadith, for instance, um, the Tafsir. Uh, you have many other things that uh, began to be very important for them. Uh, in other words, they wanted sources to back up decisions to back up traditions to back up many things but like you stated it earlier uh, they were skeptic about things that contradicted what they wanted okay i'm going to go one step further i'm going to say now at the very beginning we're just beginning this whole series i'm going to say everything we know about islam today is because of them like I said, they formalized the process oh they created the process i don't even say formalize Abdul Malik did not create Islam. What I mean by formalized, they took what's there and they began to embellish it, develop it, and now gave you sources to look at. I'm going to say that the Muhammad that we know today is an Abbasid Muhammad. The Quran that we know today is an Abbasid Quran. The, the city of Mecca that we know today is an Abbasid Mecca. The people called Muslims that we know today is an Abbasid Muslim, and Islam as we know today. The five things that we've been looking for right. from the seventh century are all because of the Abbasids. Can you mention why? Uh, I mean, I know why you said that the Quran we have today is an Abbasid Quran. If you can elaborate a Just little bit. Just look more. at this timeline here. But why? Bring There's back a the specific timeline. person. I'm showing you know. it. Yeah. That's Everything specific. we know about Islam comes from these individuals, right? Notice they all come after. 84 years is when they come after. That's why I took Ibn Ishaq down there, because Ibn Ishaq was not good enough. They had to get rid of him. And 70 years later, the narrative that we know today all begin in 833. 
That's 84 years after they came into power. It took them 84 years to start to craft, to create, and to make and to give us the narrative that we use today. That's hugely significant. That's why all of you, when listen, Muslims and those of you who are going to be talking to Muslims, you need to look at this graph. And why they're called, by the way, they are the one that we heard the term the golden age. Right there. Listen. We're going to see so many things. The five prayers that we know about, they're not five prayers in the Quran. They're only oh, absolutely three. absolutely not. Those I challenge come, any Muslim to show us five prayers in the Quran. They come from Al-Buhari. The stories about Muhammad, all the stories about his wives, all the stories about the, these raids, everything we know about Muhammad living in Medina and Mecca, everything we know about Islam comes from these individuals. And you're going to talk about it, I know, but Abbasides, by the way, named after, allegedly, the uncle of Muhammad. Abbas, and there is a tie to the Shia Islam. And, and these it, characters come from modern day Iran. Oh, hold on, you're jumping the gun again. Well, I, wanted just like people, the gun. I wanted people to see that there is an agenda when it comes to the Abbasites. So we need to stop here. And what we're going to do next, I'm going to look at this, but I'm going to ask another question in the next episode. Do we not have the same problem in Christianity? Well, I mean, it's a fair question, of course. I mean, uh, I used to ask it when I was a Muslim, and uh, we need to. Uh, you know, assume someone is asking us the same thing right now, and it's fair question that has to be addressed. So I'm going to show just how great Christianity is historically, looking at another timeline, Amen. just like this, and ask the same question. Absolutely. As always, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you are enjoying uh, this series. You can see why uh, this is uh, interactive. Uh, we yell at each other, but we're doing it because we are excited about the topic and we love one another and we hope that you too uh, will use this material really to open the door for these kind of discussions with your Muslim friends. I mean, remember, in the past, our Muslim friends will always tell us, your Bible is corrupt. And, and, and Jesus never said this. And, and, and you cannot prove that he existed at this time or look at this uh, uh, you know, manuscript evidence that uh, does not back up your dates. Okay, well, I have to say this, those days are over and we'll show you why next time. Have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.